right, so I'm starting with Oracle Developer Cloud Service, and one thing that I see happen today is Alex the admin updated task 2 uh, to have it as a high priority thing and commented that we need it today. Uh, if I go into task 2, I can see that what he needs me to do is create a jobs table. So let's go ahead and do it. So first of all, what I'm going to do is um, on my machine, I have a um, local folder down here with my liquid base scripts. Okay, those are the scripts, those are change sets, and I'm going to show you those change sets in my development environment. Okay, in this case J Developer. So it's basically it all starts with this file, a change log XML, which then points to the various change sets that I'm going to invoke. And each change set goes over and does something. For example, change set zero goes over and creates the department table. Change set 1 creates an employee table. Change set 2 uh, goes over and creates a peer SQL procedure. One thing to note here is that it's only going to work when I'm working against a database that is an Oracle database, because this is peer SQL. Change set 3 then goes over and actually populates uh, the table uh, department with values. Right, so this is my connection to my local database. Okay, and if I refresh this one, you see that right now in tables, I don't have any of those tables uh, that the change sets are creating. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and run an update command um, using Liquibase. So I'm using Liquibase, um, connecting to my SQL database. This is GJDBC, username, password, connection string, and pointing to the change log, basically telling it run all the things that are referred to from there. Okay, so we'll run the update command, and now let's refresh our database view. Oops, and now we have a department table, and we also have an employee table. Okay, and if we, by the way, click on the department table, you see the three columns, and if you click on data, you would also see three um, rows in the table. Okay, so one nice thing about um, Liquibase is the ability to do rollbacks. Okay. So the last change that I ran was change set 5. Change set 5 did a creation of row 30, okay, with the department 18. So if I go back into my command line, and instead of doing an update, I'll do a rollback count 1, okay, go back into my UI refresh, okay, I can see that now I don't have department 30. And I can refresh various steps back. So if I go back now and I do rollback of another three steps, okay, and I refresh this view, you'll see that my employee table is now gone. Okay, so that's a nice thing about um, Liquibase, the ability to roll changes forwards and backwards. Okay, let's get back into a situation where I have the latest update of my database schema. And now I want to do a change that would add the jobs table. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go over here. Let's copy a uh, change set zero. Okay, and just rename this one to change set six. Okay, and now we can also open it over here. And we're going to change this one to create a table called job. Okay. And I'm going to give it a new ID, 6. Okay. And we need an ID, that would be good. And we need a name, maybe this needs to be 30 columns. And we don't need the active column, so we can remove this one. Okay. So now we have a new chain set. In order to invoke it, we also need to update our um, main file. Okay say, okay, we now also need to run this file. Okay, and change set 6. Nice. Right, and that's the changes I need to do. Now I can actually test and see if this would work, so if I go over here and run an update command again, okay, let's refresh our view here, and voila, we have our jobs table with the two columns we defined over here. Right, so this works on my MySQL database.
Okay, now it's time to actually go and put it into our main code repository. So again, I'm using Developer Cloud Service, and inside Developer Cloud Service, one of the things we have is a Git repository. And my code is checked over here, and you can see the five files here with the changelog already here. So, I was actually working on a directory that was checked out from uh, this Git repository, which means that at this point of time I can do a git add everything that is in the XML sample directory. Okay, so this would add the two changes I did. Let's do a commit. And let's do a push. So I'm actually pushing directly into the master branch. Okay, I didn't go through branching and things like that, which you should be doing if you're uh, using properly Git. Okay, let's go back into our home page and we can see that our change have been checked in. Okay, and you can actually click on the commit and you'll be able to see the changes. So this new line and this new file. Okay, so those are now checked into my Git repository. The next thing that is happened is that if you go into our build area, you'll see that there's a job that has been queued. Okay, this is the create DB job. Let's go and show you the configuration of this job. So this job connects to our source control and works on the master branch. What triggers this job is any change in our source control. Okay, so anytime that someone checks um, or pushes a new update into our main master branch, we file this job. Um, in the environment for this job, we don't have anything meaningful. In the build steps, we do have one build step that goes and invokes Liquibase. Okay. So again, this time I'm using an Oracle database JDBC driver, and I'm connecting to a database in the cloud, running the same changelog, okay, and the same um, scripts that we just checked in. After I run those scripts, I'm using the SQL CL to connect to my database, okay, and um, get you information about the department and employees, um, and even select records from the department table. Okay. One more thing that I'm doing here is I'm using a build parameter, okay, for the password. This way, when I actually define the build step, I don't actually need to hard code the password over here. Rather, I'm using a parameter over here. So this is a more secured way of doing this. In post build, I'm invoking a unit testing job that would go over and test all my PL SQL code. So this is the job that we got queued, and as we can see, it's now being executed. So let's give it a minute. Right, and the job finished, and it was successful. Let's look at the console. Okay, console goes over, runs an update command, okay, liquid base update command, again, password is encrypted, then goes over, runs our information on department employees and selects everything from department, and we can see the three records, the two information uh, about the uh, tables as well. Um, by the way, if we go back into our jobs, we can now see that unit testing has been queued for us, again, automating the flow of making a change to the database and running tests. Let me show you one more thing. Okay, if I go over here and instead of looking into my local database, I look into my cloud instance of the same schema. Under tables, I now have the jobs table created with the same columns as we defined in our script. Okay. And going into here, we can see the information about scale, everything else defined in our Oracle Cloud database. Back over here, our unit testing is being executed. This unit testing, let's go into this job just to show you the details here. Okay. And this one, again, connects to our database and runs a UTPL SQL job to check our PL SQL procedures that we uh, changed in one of our 
uh, steps over here and again your uh, testing can test a lot of things I'm just doing one or two simple tests here and we'll wait for the job to finish to see the results of the test So our job finished successfully. We can look at the test results and see that no test were failed, one was successful and we're good to go. So we're now ready to go back into our um, issues, look at the issues that are assigned to me, go to the jobs table, this is the task, and we can now change uh, the status of the task to be result and now I have one less thing that I need to do on my to-do list so this was a full development cycle we developed our cloud service starting from getting a task going over managing the code using liquid base in our git repository okay, making changes there committing those then automatically starting build files that go over, populate our database in the cloud and even run tests in them. 